Hello everyone, my name is Jet. I'm Sarah. I'm Tia. I'm Paloma. And I'm Connor. And we are Grease Guard. Let me introduce you to Fred. Fred is one of the three billion pizza boxes used in the United States each year. Fred is a pizza box at the local pizzeria Primo's here in Barrington. Fred is on his way to a party, and on that 10 minute ride there, he accumulates a ton of grease on himself. So, at the party, after all the pizza is eaten, the person in charge of disposing of Fred goes outside and puts him in the recycling bin. It's cardboard, so it's recycling, right? Because out of the 131 people we surveyed, 62% of them said they always recycle pizza boxes no matter what. Well, if he did a little research, he could have found that any amount of grease and cheese in the box contaminates it and causes it to no longer be recyclable. And if you look closely, you'll see that almost every single pizza box has grease on it. Not only does this contaminate the box, but entire bins and shipments of recycling, wasting recycling companies' time and energy. And since all those recyclables can no longer be recycled, it hurts efforts against climate change. So after we discovered this is a huge problem, we interviewed uh, pizza restaurants and pizza consumers like Papa John's, Domino's, and Illuminati's, and the other ones up there, in order to try to gauge their interest in a solution that would work for not only the pizza restaurants, but also the consumers. So now let me introduce you to Bob. Unlike Fred, Bob is recyclable because Bob has the help of Grease Guard. Grease Guard is a biodegradable liner that goes in the bottom of a pizza box that, allows, that protects the pizza box from grease and cheese contamination, allowing it to be recyclable. So how it works is simple. You get your pizza, eat your pizza, and once you're done, all you have to do is throw your liner away, and then you can recycle the pizza box. So we can do less of this and more of this. We found three main competitors with only letting our idea. Our first competitor is Perfect Press Pizza Liners. They're a little bit overpriced, and they're trying to sell the same thing we're solving, but they don't market it the same way we're marketing it. And our second competitor is Pizza Brown Boxes. They are way too expensive, and they do not keep the pizza crispy. And our third competitor is Mad Pizza Protector. They're a decent price, but their product does not absorb any grease. Um, why are we better? Our pizza liner protects the pizza box from grease contamination, allowing the pizza box to be recyclable. It also maintains the, the, the pizza crispy with allowing airflow. And it's super convenient to use because, it, because of its simplistic fashion. Our target customer segment are pizza restaurants, and we're we intend to sell it through the like direct channel, which is our website, so they can easily locate our product in one spot and order it in a bulk. So who's going to be buying Grease Guard? This is Brian. <laughs> Brian is a local pizza owner of a member service here in Barrington. And he's always wanted to volunteer and help out his community. And he values a lot of his customers' feedback. But he does not want to pay a lot of money just to recycle pizza box. But with Grease Guard, if Grease Guard is able to maintain his pizza crispier, fresher, and give his restaurant the reputation of being environmentally conscious, then that would um, give him an advantage over other local places. And that would also spark his interest because he'll be able to attract more customers. Each unit includes 500 sheets. The price per unit is $95, each sheet being 15 cents. And our cost per unit is $65.25, the mesh being 10 cents and the grease resistant sheet being 5 cents. And our gross profit margin is 31.3%. So the average uh, pizza restaurant in America uh, sells and uses about 3,200 pizza boxes per month, uh, which with our 500 uh, sheets per unit, that's 6.4 uh, units of Grease Guard per month. Uh, so if every pizza restaurant in America bought Grease Guard that, uh, that many times, uh, we'd have a total addressable market of $450 million. Obviously, we can't uh, reach that amount of the, the entire country, but uh, in Illinois, uh, if that same amount was bought from each restaurant, we'd have $21.95 million in our serviceable addressable market. Uh, and then in our first year, out of the 3,000 pizza restaurants in Cook County, uh, we think we'll be able to uh, talk to at least 200 and have a conversion rate of 10%, leaving us with 20 customers for our first year and $146,300 of first year market share. Um, the number of units sold was 1,540. In the first month, we started with three customers, and throughout the year, we increased by one customer a month. 
and our total revenue was 146,300, and we subtracted our cost, which is over 100,385. So we were given $470 in funding for an MVP, and we used that on testing our product in real restaurant settings, and also creating QR code stickers, which we would put on the top of the pizza boxes that had gift cards in them. Um, to capture customer feedback and introduce our product into the real world, we created a minimum viable product plan. So our original plan for our MVP was to attract our customers to our landing page, but we found it would be more beneficial to contact, market, and sell to pizzerias through a direct approach, in person and face-to-face, -face, because we would get the most responses compared to if we did a website or an email list. And also in the process of creating our liners, um, we made some slight adjustments like increasing the layers of butcher paper and also changing the type of glue after individually testing it out among the five of us. So our experiment, we decided to test our liners out with local pizzerias to see how it can actually function in a real business place. And we chose to do this with local pizzerias so we can not only test our solution, but also our unique value propositions and our customer relationships. We also wanted to see how consumers reacted to Grease Guard being in the box and Grease Guard's overall performance. So how we did it. We created and designed a QR code sticker that would go inside of the pizza box that has a Grease Guard liner on it so that when the consumers scan it, it takes them directly to a survey that they can fill out. It just has a couple quick questions about Grease Guard's overall performance. And we are also looking for pizza restaurants to see if they would be willing to purchase the Grease Guard. So our early adopters, we knew that they had to be local pizzerias that would be super easy to contact. So we reached out to Primo's and La Pizza Via and they both agreed to work with us. So we dropped off 40 liners and stickers at Primo's, and out of those 40 people, 12.5% filled out the survey, and 80% of those people said they had no grease on their pizza box, and 100% said they had a crispier pizza. Um, from La Pizza Via, we dropped off 60 liners and stickers, and 0% of those people filled out the survey. So our adjustments. So we were in contact with a lot of the different pizzerias, but as you saw from our last slide, the turnout from La Pizza Via filling out our QR code sticker was super low. So when contacting with them afterwards, we found out that there was mishaps with not including the QR code sticker in the box with the liner or just not including the liner at all. So moving forward, we know that we have to be a lot more hands-on with the pizzas, pizzerias, and just filling them in in every step that we want them to do. And even with Primo's where we did have a good turnout, we wanted the turnout to be even higher for the QR codes. So we adjusted our stickers, making it a lot more easier to read, the QR code sticker being bigger and the incentive to win a free pizza a lot bigger. We're asking for $6,500 in return for 6% ownership in our company. So what will this capital be used for? Uh, the first thing we're going to do is engineer our product with the University of Illinois and make it uh, the best we possibly can. Uh, and then the majority of this will be used for startup inventory, which will be $4,138, uh, which is the first two months of selling our product. And then uh, we also need money for intellectual property, which includes uh, customer lists and um, something else. Yeah. Uh, and then starting our LLC. And then we also have a liquidity cushion of around $1,100. So uh, we're basing this off of a post money valuation of $108,628. And then uh, our exit strategy is to sell our company uh, in year five to Gordon Food Service, uh, which is a pizza box distributor in uh, the Chicagoland area who holds pretty much majority of the pizza boxes uh, that are sold to the restaurants. And then this, this leaves you guys with a uh, internal rate of return of 57.7% and a money multiple of 7.6. During this 10 minute presentation, 57,078 pizza boxes were sold. That's $22,253 of cardboard, but most sadly, 376 trees. Be the change of global warming one box at a time using Grease Guard. Yeah, uh, so yeah, we talk to a lot of them, and a lot of them buy from like a big 
company like Gordon Food Services. I think that's where uh, Charlotte's gets their boxes. This is actually from Gordon Food Services right here. There's like three main distributors. Yeah. Have, did you um, think about contacting Gordon's about how, whether they have any solutions for lining the pizza? Like, do they also sell that product? They do not sell the liners. Uh, most of our competition is just private, like their own website where mm -hmm. they, companies can buy it off of. I didn't follow the cost difference. Like if I'm Brian from you know, Charlotte's or I own a pizzeria, what's the cost difference to have, uh, well, no liner versus your liner, the cost difference is the cost of your liner. But do they have an alternative? Are people putting some liner? Or are they putting, throwing the pizza yeah, in the box? Most, like, most, most of them have put, cardboard, right? Yeah, most do put like liners. It's kind of like the mesh thing on top of that uh, that they're using. And that's like about 20 cents. But some don't, and then the box just gets completely okay, destroyed. Okay, so for the ones that do, it's 20 cents a yeah. pizza. And how much is yours? Uh, 19. Okay. So the value proposition is for the same cost, you can. Um, be, you can promote yourself as being environmentally you know, yeah. better, and I think where you what you may have discovered is a crispier crust. Like, yes, that's probably really important to a pizzeria, like keeping the crust crispy. Uh, okay, same price though. Yeah. Um, how is it uh, actually going to be delivered? Is it going to be a big roll where they put it up? Is it a stack of boxes? Do they have to have? different sizes for 12 inch, 14 inch, 16 inch, like how, how are some of the delivery of the product? Are we thinking about that? So we will have like boxes that will sell them in with like stacks of liners in them. And I think we're planning on selling them about like 200, but we'll sell them 500 like per unit, but mm -hmm. that's not gonna fit in one box probably. So we'll have like multiple boxes that get shipped per mm -hmm. unit. Mm -hmm. And we will have different sizes. Different yeah, sizes, yeah. okay. So there, there's a, movement in investing and I think just worldwide around ESG. Are you guys familiar with ESG? Environmental safety governance. Um, and it's, it's a big deal for investors to invest in companies that are, uh, that are saving the environment. Let's put it that way. There are, uh, I am almost sure I don't know which pizza, the large national pizza pizza chains are, but some of them are owned by private equity investors, and they require those companies to sign up for a uh, an ESG initiative. This would be a it, first of all, it'd be a coup because it, it'd be a large pizza worldwide pizza chain or, or national pizza chain. But I, I would look into uh, companies that are owned by private equity firms, pizzerias that are owned by private equity firms, and they're not the local ones. It's like you know Pizza Huts of the world, and 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 approach them, uh, their their ESG director, and and see what type of feedback you get on, on this. I love the way you guys hit a trifecta, in essence, with your product. I mean, from what I see makes a crispier crust, which hopefully means better eating experience. The second thing, it's environmentally friendly. And then the third thing, it doesn't cost the pizza companies, at least at this point, the restaurants anymore, since you're about a penny less than what they're currently using. So I'm just curious, how in your MVP experiment did you then help the pizza restaurants whose employees didn't look like they were putting in your liner? even though they had the liner there? Um, so we, we, when we drop off our liners, we go in and ask them, like, hey, we can come in and put the liners in for you guys and put the stickers on. But they said they got it under control. Uh -huh. The only problem that happened with Pizza Pia was that, like, the general manager of, like, the restaurant who I gave, like, the stuff to, I asked her if she wanted help, and she said, no, my employees can do it. She just misplaced the stickers, so they didn't get on the liners that went through. Okay, so that was... Kind of a mess on the owner's part. Do the stickers go on the liners or on the top of the box? Or the box. See them? Yeah, I think we're we right when you open, open the box, it's on like right. It's like right in this corner, yeah. right there. Okay. I think that's key to, yeah. to getting yeah. more out there is getting the feedback from the users on crispy pizza, no grease, 
that can really help you if you can really get a lot more content back in users. I like how you iterated on the QR code. Did you get the results from the second version, right, or is that in process for to see if the second version is more effective of the QR code? That was the stickers we dropped at LP to be at, but didn't get. One of the things that um, I didn't quite catch in your projections for how this business was going to perform is how you were going to staff it. Like, is the is the business or are the employees in the business going to be working for free? Um, yeah. Salaries. I mean, by year five, we're making over two hundred fifty thousand in net income. So, I mean, hopefully, we'll be able to pay ourselves. I, I don't know. We don't exactly know what types of employees we'll need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as of right now, we're just making the liners ourselves, but we're hoping to, as we move forward, look into that and like further get some more money. What's involved with you guys making the liners? Do you have to handle the cuts? Do you have to staple? Do you have to walk me through that? Again. So we currently use um, the big paper cutter actually provided by the school, and so we just cut like in bulk, like 60 sheets at a time, and so then. We have to hand glue the sheets together to make the layers and then put the mesh line on the top right now. Did you do any work um, with the end user, meaning that the person ordering the pizza, on whether or not they uh, would buy a pizza that has a, an environmentally better box versus buying a pizza from another pizzeria that doesn't have a uh, you know, of an environmentally friendly product. We, we didn't. But it's like a lot of people uh, would probably say yes. I mean, yeah, so if that's your hypothesis, which I don't know, may, I think I agree with you, but I'm not sure. But if you're the pizza owner and you have something that says, gosh, you're doing your part as providing a solution, your crust is crispier, and by the way, your customers will buy from you because you're offering this product. That's a third leg of the value proposition that that may resonate. You know, it's really competitive out there. Like Brian McManus, if you went to him and told him that 10% uh, of the people that buy pizza have told us in this survey that they would buy a pizza that they can recycle the box versus not. Well, in the beginning of the year, when I said we're talking about our interviews, uh, we actually did talk to like our friends and family, and most of them did say they would buy them. Like they'd spend like the extra twenty cents for something to get. Yeah, them maybe you uh, maybe you spend a little bit of uh, your resources. It doesn't it won't cost a lot of money to formalize that survey, where you can you know show uh, an, an owner of a pizzeria that the evidence around that. Like, hey, we talked to twelve hundred people. Here's the survey we showed. Here's how they answered it. If the evidence is, you know, undisputable, or uh, well, even beyond that, what Mr. Miles is saying is, is the you ha you have a if the the, the call to action or the, the free pizza like that's a great thing. A survey you could even like add one more thing, like anything else you'd like to say about the pizza, and you could actually give feedback, data feedback to the pizzeria owners, mm -hmm. and that would be very valuable too. It's like, oh my gosh, for twenty cents, I get the data back from the consumers. That could be very valuable too. Ah, the QR code. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alone is a mm -hmm. research opportunity. One minute. So where are you guys at in terms of your mindsets and who wants to continue with this next year? I do. I do too. I don't think going anywhere. No, not so no, yes, yes. No. No. Kind of undecided. All right. <laughs> 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 All right, thank All right you guys. thanks guys. Yeah.